What's going on, everybody? We are back. We got uh, an in-between week. Um, yep. That's some nice PVE changes that are going to give us a look into next week's changes. Which, all this could just be garbage, of course. It's tentative, you know? Yeah, it is all tentative, but who knows? Sometimes this stuff goes through. The The numbers are the most tentative part. The changes tend to tend to stick one way or the other, um, with with some slight number changing, but that's okay. Also, bear with us. We're trying to figure out the best uh way to record video and Zoom. It's a little bit We're easier. On it. Yeah, so it'll get better. I promise. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. So, well, we, with we that said, in... let's uh, we'll start. Let's get in with it. Would they get the 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 quick patch rundown that they released? I don't even remember who it was that released it. Um, it's got starts off with a systems nurse, which is basically items. I don't know why they call it systems, but whatever. It's it's items. <laughs> um, and you're looking at divine sunder dropping five AD, uh, which I think is pretty significant considering the champions that are using it are AD champions, not not all just bruisers. I mean, you have your Ezreals, you have your Ekarims, your Wukongs, the biggest, uh, etc. The biggest issue with this item is it's just no one wants to build Trinity Force. It's just Sunder is just way better than than Trinity Force. There's no point to build Trinity Force, and Trinity Force isn't a bad item. But just, Sunder this is, is just, just better. better. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. So that's again, like a, the theme is they're gonna lo- slowly lower the. Um, they're not gonna go f- like balls to the wall with these nerfs. Um, I'm assuming, you know, if this doesn't do much, because I think I read that patch 1119 is going to be the world's patch. So okay. maybe, you know, if this we'll isn't enough, patches. this isn't enough, you know, what 5AD, I don't think is going to be that much. The biggest thing is the the sheen proc damage and the healing, which I think changing. I think part of it with this particular item is that your potential champions that are that are going to use it are also seeing a bit of uh, either an increase or decrease somewhere. So I think it's not just the item. I think it's also the champions that are using it mm-hmm. to give them other uh, opportunities to use other items, i.e. Gangplank. We'll get there. All right, so then we move into <laughs> Serpent's Fang, which I feel, I feel like is not built enough. On... Yeah, I don't know why this is getting nerfed for lethality because at least in low elo, it's this item doesn't get built. Uh, I always feel weird um, building this on like I don't build it on a marksman. No, you don't build it on a carry. This is like a, a mid lane, maybe a top lane, but probably a mid lane or, or jungle build. Like a I really like I look at this item and I think Zed Talon. Yeah, it's like a. I mean, I see lethality. Or... Or and, maybe maybe even Pantheon. Yeah, like yeah, I see this lethality, and I'm like, oh, I'm never gonna build that item. Yeah, if, I, if I'm a got, marksman. The, the shitty thing is, it's got a good use. I mean, the, the the passive of reducing shields the same way as Grievous reduces healing is really good because the way you combat uh, a team with with Grievous wounds is you build shields. Like, okay, I'm not gonna heal, but I'm gonna have temporary health. Exactly, and that's Grievous Wounds. I mean, think of, like, Tom Kench, top, is really gross. Yeah, you especially this item against Tom Kench. This item and, like, a... a... Oh, God damn, I can't think of the name of the, <laughs> any other Grievous item. Jesus Christ. Like, <laughs> um, mail, uh What's uh, the... What's the sword? Sword of the... No, what is the sword called? <laughs> I was about to say Avarice Blade. God, not... Jesus Christ. Ex- I want to call it Sword of the Divine, which is the same picture as Avarice Blade. Good lord, what is wrong with me? Nothing. Okay. All right. Um, 680. Moving on. So six, oh, six, six lethality. Six lethality drop down. That's pretty significant. I mean, that's a third of the lethality. That's pretty significant. I would not be surprised if this gets dropped maybe to 15 instead of 12. I mean, yeah, um, but I mean, the whole point that's, is that's like a lot. You're not building this item for lethality. You're building it for that passive. It's also it's also not an early item. No, it's so, like third. Yeah, so I don't see why the lethality being dropped is going to be a big difference. But I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we'll see a time. We're not high enough, you to know that. So <laughs> not yet. No, it's not, not yet. Really at least. Happen. Anyways, we'll uh, we'll pass up on that to the wits end. This item is so magic. fucking broken, oh, dude. Dude, this I I love this item. I've <laughs> this is one of the few items that Dean calls my favorites. 
because uh, it's just one of those ones that's so versatile. You can build it on a tank, like a fighting tank. You can build it on a bruiser. You can build it on a marksman. Unless, it's got so many good uses. Unless the enemy team is like full AD, it is never a bad idea never to build this idea. item. And I remember last season when they added the healing thing to it, I'm like, this item's broken. This is a Shen special right here. Um, but they are dropping, or they're changing. I guess it is dropping. The on-hit magic damage was 15 to 80, uh, scaling linearly levels 1 through 18. Basically meaning, what's the difference between 15 and 80? Is that 65? Uh, yes. 65 divided by 18, that's how much you would get per level. It's no longer a linear scale. So this is really weird. It's going to push it to a late game item or a mid game item as opposed to an well, early game yeah, item. Yeah, because people will be this is, buying the second item. This is to prevent Vayne. <laughs> this L- is literally a anybody. direct nerf to Vayne in particular, who is doing extremely well building a wit's end first item against a magic damage support, even like, or even a slightly magic damage carry like Kaisa, this is a direct, direct at vein. I mean, I I also see like Kogma rushing. Or Kogma as well. I forgot about Kogma. Kogma is another story because that Kogma. that dude doesn't even have to build a mythic and he just does tons of damage to Tank Ma. Yeah, that guy's got it. Yeah, um, he's got his own issues. Yeah, I think this is definitely gonna. But the non-linear scaling means, uh, you get fifteen damage. Levels 1 through 8, which is nothing, which is telling you you need to build this item at least second if you're playing a marksman, maybe third if you're playing a, a top laner or, or an AD mid laner. Um, once you get to level 9, it starts scaling between 25 and 80. So there's your 65 point scaling between 9 levels. So that means it's going to scale up a little bit harder. Um, but at the end of the day, level 1 is going to be the same, and level 18 is going to be the same. It's the in-between levels that are different. Right. Okay, so those are the nerfs. Again, I don't know why they say system. But I know they say I items. Know, but... Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, I well, guess, I guess well, they're... I, they're <laughs> answered the question Are right they just here. grouping Fleet items and yeah. keystones? Whatever. Must be. Must okay, be. so Fleet Footwork, and I know we were talking about this prior, especially when we, like, talk about Caitlyn, because... This item need or this this keystone need a little bit extra, and I know. So I'm glad we, Riot listened to us, right? They're they're listening. <laughs> Riot, so, can you hear me? So they're they're I believe they're making it. So let me see. So it's going from three to sixty plus thirty percent bonus AD and AP to ten to a hundred. So a little bit better in the beginning, and then it's a lot better at the end. Plus. 10% extra on the bonus AD and then and uh yes another 10% and then um this is the other thing this is the thing where it's kind of it should have been under adjustments because yeah. they're they're lowering the healing off melees for for if they're lowering the healing for both melees and melees are getting hit hard with that cuz like yeah, I don't understand. So it's it's only when you're attacking minions, though, right? Yeah, I mean, if you hit an enemy champion, um, so you get hundred both ranged and melee get a hundred percent of the healing, but melee like lie on live servers right now, melee gets the full, uh, fleet heal from minions, and uh, range only get t- twenty. So then now they're changing that hundred to twenty, which is a very hard nerf for melee. Yeah. And then 10%. Yeah, I don't get that. Actually, I would think, and this is just my own postulation, but I would think that attacking a range should give you higher healing because you have to step up further to hit a range minion. Unless you're Caitlyn. You do. It, it's still, no, either way, you still got to step up further because they do sit about 100 to 200 units back. I don't know what the actual unit measurement is, but they sit pretty far back in the lane at a regular lane state and that is like beginning of the game minions meet your your range sit in the back your melee sit up here and then you have to you know if you should get rewarded for hitting something uh more aggressively than something more defensively i would think now maybe they're trying to make it a more defensive keystone which i guess it is but it has i mean the movement speed boost is pretty aggressive i mean i i I don't know (laughs) this they just want you using 
They just want you to using that proc on enemy champions. They don't like. I mean, it makes sense. They do. They do. Otherwise, you get way more off of hitting a champion, which is way better. Caitlyn, pop. Thank you. I mean, it's just gonna. It's just trying to protect. Um, like if if your laner, your the person you're laning against leaves, why you should, like melees right now can just fucking heal back up. Like they get the full heal, yeah. which is kind of yeah. dumb. So it's, I guess it makes it a little bit more fair. Yeah. So. I, I'm, I'm excited, we'll see, though. We'll see what happens. It's going to be... We'll see what happens. I still expect to see the Caitlyns and maybe the Jins. I think the Jins are still yeah, I think... better with with um, Dark, Dark Harvest. Harvest because of the lethality build for Jin. He needs that because he just does so poorly in the tanks that you might as well just take the lethality into the squishies and move on with your life. I'm stoked, but... though. I think this this could be... It would be interesting. I, love, I It's going to make me want to play Caitlyn. Yeah. Oh. Is there another champion that uses this? Um, I mean, aside from... Sivir was the only other one that I could think of, but Sivir now is just Dark Harvest and Are Lethality. Are we just thinking like, Marksman? Any any champion. Well, once we get to the gangplank changes, I feel like gangplank's gonna be Oh, GP, this. okay, GP can um, use it. I know, like, you got Nasus that can use... Like, there's... It's very Yeah, Nasus can, but I think... Yeah, it is very niche, because I think Nasus... Uh, Nasus is still better with uh, Grasp. Yeah, but... so we'll, we'll see. I think this was just... I honestly think this was just made. I mean, it's nerfed for melees, and then it's buffed for. Ra- I don't. It feels like it's buffed for range. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it does. Because you're gonna it whatever. Does. I think. Yeah, this is gonna a lot of champions. I feel like are gonna um, go back to this for marksman at, at least. At the end of the day, hit the champion, not the minion. If you want to heal. Um. So next we got Holebreaker, which is getting a hundred HP. I don't think it's going to be enough. That. I don't think it it's enough. It needs that. It needs that it. That is, that's like a, like a 300 gold value what, for free. Ru- Ruby Kirst Crystal is 150, right? Oh, is it 150? I thought, yeah, yeah, Ruby Crystal is 150 health, but it's a 400 right. uh, so, yeah, it's gold three, item. So you're looking 250, three, 300 gold. 50, yeah. I don't yeah. think it's enough though. I, it it could... might not be enough, but it's definitely going to give you a little bit of a push as like a sec. In item, still not a good second item though. Anathema is still better, item. dude. It's yeah, Anathema is way better. Yeah, Plus, yeah. Holebreaker. This is, is one of those items. Dude, okay, I I go, don't even go. build this item that much. Does it? Does it give AD? It gives AD, right? Uh, I think it builds out of a pickaxe. Uh, yes, it does. Why don't they just Can get I find the Holebreaker? Why don't they just gut? Uh, it gives you fifty AD, four hundred they... health, one hundred and fifty base health regen, dude. Just gut the AD and just give me like just make just make it a tank item. I don't know. Like, why does it have to have AD? Well, f- it it has AD because it's for tower killing, isn't it? Okay. Well, it right like it's it's for a split pusher, so they need AD. They're not going to build it otherwise. So it needs AD. I don't. Know, it, it's, it's just also like they should just give it fucking mo- group. I don't know. Can we just give it movement speed when it's around turrets and <laughs> okay. bring back okay. the rot? What, what was what was was it? Uh, what was the item? Uh, Raptor's cloak. Yeah, yeah. Just, just bring back Raptor's cloak. That was sure. a Let's fucking wonderful it. item. That was a wonderful <laughs> item. Um, so uh, I I, I gonna say maybe it'll be enough. It it's not gonna be enough. It's not. But I feel like this item in. This might be a hot take, and maybe maybe it's just lukewarm. This item is equivalent to Rise. You touch it just a little bit too much, and it's going to fucking take over. And it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. I just, but I, you don't do anything with it, it's going to do nothing. This, and it, almost like Sanguine Blade was the same way. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. You, you, it's... it's <laughs> It's weird because the counter to this item, if you touch, if you just tune it too much, is anathemas, right? Anathemas, okay. You want to build hole breaker, and you're gonna try to just one v one me the entire time. You're not gonna group. Fine, I'm gonna build anathemas, and we're gonna even out the uh, MR and armor discrepancy because you're gonna do less damage to me, and I'm gonna do less damage to you, and we're just gonna have a wet noodle fight. I just, I think the issue with items like this is. The, the games are gonna like you're gonna if you buy this second item you're like all right i'm committing to split pushing i'm not gonna team fight and you're low, low elo yeah Turn but low, low elo 
Friend of Aaron. <laughs> it's gonna it'll happen. Like low elo, people don't know how to respond to the split pushing. They don't. But they get shit on in a four v five team fight while your Fiora is split pushing. Your four teammates die, and then they end because games end so fucking then, quickly. Yeah, and then they five band down mid, and you're fucked. So it's like you're you like, have to make up, you got to gamble that. Be like, okay, I'm gonna build this. I am never gonna fight with you guys. Peace. Like, I don't. Yeah. Know, I I mean, maybe, may I mean, it it's fucking great on York. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. York and split pushers. I feel like York, plus like with Trinity Force that has the X. I feel. I guess. No, I I still think Sunder is the best. Just for the extra healing. I was yeah, say, it's still better. Training Force just does extra damage to turrets, but whatever. Does it? Know. It does. It has that ramping damage, like the fervor. Oh, it's okay, okay. And that stacks You know what? That turrets. wouldn't be bad with Holebreaker. No, it's a good combo. Different different, different conversation. It's a, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> different conversation. Either way, Holebreaker, a little bit of a buff, maybe, mm, let's call it 275 gold worth of a buff. Is that enough? That's to be seen. We'll uh we'll do some experiments. Uh, okay. Yumu's Ghostblade. I can't remember. Interesting the... item. I don't remember the last time I've seen this item in a game. It's been an extremely long time, and I remember this item was anybody who might use a little bit of lethality would build it. I mean, you your, got your GPS, your Zeds, your Talons. Uh, God, who else is the AD? I the was Tiana. I was reading uh graves, right? Yeah, it was. I mean, um, God damn it, Sophie. Um, I was fuck. I was reading. It's, it. It. We'll talk about it when we get to Lucian changes. But the uh, the active was just so fucking good when it gave you attack speed. It used to give you attack speed and movement speed. That was a long, long time ago, right? Well, yeah, when Brutalizer was still in the game. Brutalizer. That was a good item. Thirteen thirty-seven gold. Let's go. <laughs> um. So, anyways, we are getting a price reduction and a build path change so what i don't what was the build path before the one that's live yeah it's a pickaxe and a dirk so now it's a dirk and a warhammer it's the same thing as all the other th fucking two the other three uh, uh, the other two lethality items it's yeah, the yeah. same build which i guess is i don't know i don't know if i like that but it's i don't hate it because you just go back to the costco build <laughs> bulk long swords um <laughs> So it's getting a hundred gold drop. It's losing five AD, but is now getting fifteen ability haste, which is which a fair. Is really I think good. it's a really fair good. Trade. Think of your Zeds and again your Zeds and your Talons fucking, and God even your Graves. It. God damn it, dude! You're, you're gonna see those guys, your AD powerhouses that don't scale. You're gonna see them come in. Yeah, even shit, even Jace. You're well, see, I think you're gonna see a lot of Jace. Well, I'm looking at uh, the champion nurse. I see Graves, Kane, and Zed. There you nerfed, go. See so. the champions that use it. You're not gonna see a Jace nerf because Jace isn't. I mean, he's pro play right now, sort right. of. But he's kind of borderline in and out. He's not a mainstay, but I think you'll see him come back as a mainstay uh, with lethality builds into some of these early tanks and into the Nars and stuff like that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. We will. All right. Um. So we are moving down to champion nerfs. And we'll be, uh, looks like we're starting with Graves here. Graves, the uh, mana, a mana nerf, which is, I think, really good on his Q, especially. Uh, that's his big damage, big damage skill. Um, from 60 mana to 80 mana, which is a lot. I don't know what Graves' mana pool is to start. Uh, I should probably look that up, but I think that's pretty significant in terms of his jungle clear. It's going to slow him down. Um, in terms of his team fighting power early, it's gonna slow him down a lot. I I just I think this is just trying to kill. I don't. I've I've seen like top graves like once. Graves, I mean, if you, okay, I mean, it if, starts with three hundred and twenty-five mana. I don't so know. Eighty I, is a lot. It is. I just. It's just like if you're. I mean, they, I, this this tells me they want to keep him in the jungle. Yeah. Because obviously you get the mana regen. It's not that big of a deal. You have some um, people that have been laning him in the I, top lane. I mean, I guess it's it's just a lane bully. Is doable? Is it the best? No. Nah. 
But uh, anyways, pretty small nerf there. I think that's just to combat some of uh, the buffs he's going to get inadvertently from uh, Ghostblade. Hell, even Graves could use uh, Fleet Footwork if he wanted to. That's a nice movement speed. That's a good... Sort of chase um, you down. It, ooh, see, that's... I think that was like the... Oh, I guess people would take Dark Harvest jungling, but I mean, I've, I whenever I play Graves, I play with Fleet. But um, now they're reducing... Hold on. But it won't affect him in the jungle because the, the, right. the jungle oh, that's monsters, right. Jungle that's monsters. absolutely right. You get full healing off of jungle yeah. creeps, regardless yeah, so, melee. I mean, that's he can right. Still, he can still deal with that. It's Fucking not a problem at all. God about that. That's you're, yeah. You're that's a, that's something. <laughs> that's something. Not a lot of people will be will think of. Like, oh, you need to heal, and there's just no champions minions. around. Just go hit the fucking raptors or whatever. You'll get the yeah. full healing, uh, value. That's true. Okay, so. That's why you're seeing the Graves nerf, because you're seeing two buffs inadvertent, you're going to see a nerf. Ooh, that's going to be cool. Jungler, junglers are going to be using fleet. <clears throat> yeah. Extra movement speed, hit that about scuttle that. and fucking sprint up to the lane or whatever. Ooh. Don't even kill a scuttle, just hit it and sprint. That's, that's why they're nerfed. Okay, that makes, this makes fucking sense we're, now. we're putting the pieces together here as we're, as we're talking about them, guys. Uh... <laughs> Bear with us. Um, uh, Aurelia, the Q heal down from 12 to 20 to 8 to 16. She needs this. And I know how you're always for reducing healing. She needs a reduction because this champion, stupid. when she starts going, is absolutely unfucking stoppable. And I hate it. Dumb it's, it's, champion. It, you want to kill that thing and burn it with fire. Don't ever look at this thing again. I hate that champion. But so 4%, for the reason that. Yeah. She's a good champion, and if you suck with mechanics, she's awful. But if you're good with mechanics, she's really good. And I can't hate on it because she does have a high skill cap. There's also another champion that can use Wit's End very well. Extreme. Think about that. So, well, so there's double not, nerf. Yeah, double nerf. I like to see it four percent. Uh, but she'll just build it later. Honestly, she'll still use the item. She'll just build it later. It's not. It's not a terrible this, thing. I think it's just to help kill third item to weaken her laning phase because she can just like zoom around and just heal yeah. back up to full HP. Yeah, that's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. It's always been like that. Even old Aurelia, when I used to play Aurelia. I can't play new Aurelia. I don't have that kind of skill. Um, right. So Kane, Kane, Blue, Blue, Blue Kane. Kane in particular. The passive bonus magic damage is also down from 12 to 44 to 8 to 30. So not anything huge in the early game, but a late game, 14% is a lot. So what I was, I was reading people given their takes on this one is because I, I don't know if you've seen it, but I've seen blue canes that build gore drinker and they just don't no, die. I haven't seen that. Oh my God. So that's what I always see dust blade. Yeah. So the, I mean, there was a, if you take, cause normally if you play blue cane assassin, like full assassin, you go dust blade with dark harvest, but I've seen basically you build blue cane, like red cane with conqueror oh gore drinker. God. So you're you zooming around massive fucking damage. Your passive you would deal, you know, 12 to 44 live. You would heal and you're unkillable. So now this is dropping his raid boss cane. <laughs> it's dropping the uh, passive damage on his blue. Okay. So, I okay. mean, that's, it's, it's that. good. I mean, I don't see we cane that. that often to be honest. I don't, but I think it takes a good person to play cane, um, to play him really well, especially blue cane. I think it takes a good player to play an assassin in general, because I think the the way you have to weave in and out of a fight is very difficult. And uh, at low elo, it's a lot easier, obviously. But at high elo, I I feel like that's extremely difficult. And so I like I know I I don't play assassins. I can't play assassins. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I want to just get in there and hit somebody. <laughs> right. I better off with the tank, or better off not even that great with the marksman. Better off with the tank, or better off with a utility champion. Because I don't understand the ins, ins and outs of, of how and when to do things and when not to poke and whatnot. So uh, this is needed. A, a really good player can utilize a blue cane extremely well. It's it's weird, too, because I just now people are just probably going to play red cane. And that's equally as annoying because that dude does not die. He doesn't die. He's like Aatrox heals too much. <laughs> so. Build Grievous Wounds second item. First, or at least get a component, first, please. First base, 800 gold. Get a component. Whether it's Executioner's Calling, I got the item right this time, it's not Avarice Blade, or Oblivion Orb, or even Brambles, which sucks. Build a Grievous item early. And you don't have to finish the item, but get the 40%. Just get it's it. It's extremely important. 
I promise you it will level your game up. You should, if you're in iron or bronze, you should at least get to silver, maybe even gold with that. It is that important, and people don't recognize that, and there's too many times where I'm playing a game, or we're playing a game, and we look, and it's like, oh, we're the only ones with Grievous, and nobody else on our team has Grievous, and guess who's winning the game? The Aatrox, team, Aurelia, Soraka, yeah, whoever's got Sona, healing. Whatever. Yeah. Get so, it. Just fucking just... buy it. Sack 800 gold. It's not hard. Anyways. Uh, next, we got Leona, who's probably, like, the best support. Engaged support. Excellent engaged support. She has one weakness. So they're they're helping out, dropping that uh, MR weakness. Or that, that MR, which is really good, actually, because... Is five a she lot, though? It is early. It is early. Um, I mean... Look at your your AP supports that are popular right now, Brandon Zyra. Zyra especially. Uh, Zyra fucks all over Leona. The only way Leona can do anything is she has to get on top of Zyra. But if Zyra can keep her distance, Leona's not doing anything. She's neutralized. So right. lowering that makes that an even bigger counterplay to that, an even harder game for Leona, because she does everything else so well that she needs another weakness i think and uh, this is where five isn't a ton but it should be enough to feel early game for sure you might not feel it too much late game because you're gonna have lock it and all these other items but right. in the early game it, it should feel it should feel pretty good um so viego's next and i realized we didn't i didn't grab the little thing for it but i do have so do you want to skip viego and go to zed and then we'll go back to viego i do i do zed have the i have do have the uh i can read it really quick just okay. really quick i found it so basically, so it, it's okay. So first of all, his auto attack range is dropping by twenty five. So it's going from two twenty five to two hundred. What is the regular melee auto attack range? Is it one eighty? That's a great question. I don't what well, like like the average. Yeah, let's just like I don't know what like Scion. What's Scion? I guess it does it. Is it based on character size? I don't, I don't know. Think so. Um, Let me look. Yeah, look that up. I'll Scion. keep going. Yeah. yeah. Um. His passive, which is the big one, it's the healing when he jumps into a body, is dropping from based out of 8% healing to 3%. And then the um, uh, his scaling is going up a hair on it. And um, But it's the big thing is it from 8% to 3%. So he's not going to be like healing that much anymore. So over okay, what? so six. Nine, so eight. melee units can range from one twenty five to two fifty. Okay, so he's um, right in the middle now. Range would be three hundred to six fifty. So yeah, Viego was on the upper side of that. He's a little bit brought back towards the middle, which I think is needed because that champion when he pops off is OP. Um, and I do like these changes. This makes him more feast or famine. He's far less safe, which he needs. This champion should not be a safe champion. He should be similar to the other fighters in his role. Yasuo, uh, Yoni. Um, name me another fighter that I'm forgetting. That, that's uh, like that? Shit, GP, even, in that in that range, right? So you should be punished if you can't get your auto attack off. And so dropping that extra 25 units, I think is actually rather important right. because he can pop off like nobody's fucking business. Um, and then low, they had to take some kind of power away from him, especially with the whole like body jumping aspect. Like not only is he invulnerable for like a second, he gets to heal. So they're dropping that by 60 like it's going from eight to three eight to three eight to three but they're changing so what i like about this is that they're changing to all of his bonuses so it's based it's basically based on how many items you have right your bonus attack damage your ap ratio and your attack speed ratio are going up so your your bonus attack damage was a quarter of your bonus ad it's now going to go to 0.03 Sorry, not even a quarter. It was 0.025, now going to 0.03. Not major, very minor. Your AP ratio, which you probably shouldn't have any of unless you have Baron, is going to go to 0.02 from 0.15. But I think the biggest one is the attack speed is going to double. So your attack speed ratio is going to double. So that says, 
build your static shivs, build your that RFC. item. That item doesn't exist anymore. Whatever, <laughs> uh, RFC exists. Why are you build building your, like, Why are you building RFC on on <laughs> fucking? Diego? I don't know. <laughs> With sand, dude, right here, perfect. Blade of the Rune King, so, perfect. No, the, build I, those items. Don't build the tankier items I, like the Sterix. Is I what can't. It's, it's I can't remember what writer. Is it um I think August is the one that designed this, right? August? I think so. They they were saying cuz this champion uses Thunder and they want him to change to building one of the uh, marksman mythics like um Shieldbow. Yeah, they want cuz that's with the attack speed cuz Shieldbow's the item. Thunder yeah. Shieldbow give... or even Gale Force, but yeah. That's what they want. That's what the why they're doubling the um He should he should play like Yasuo Yoni. He should be in there hitting you as many times as he can, but being a glass cannon pretty much and relying on lifesteal to, to bring him back. And that's the whole reason he's he has Blade of the fucking Ruined King. Like, the whole point of that item is lifesteal. This is what this guy should be doing is lifestealing, not just healing off nothing for free and being safe to play in the back. I just, I'm, I'm looking at this. So far we've gone over... Sunder nerfs, wits end nerfs, and then he's actually getting nerfs. This is like the kill Viego. I think this is gonna. This I don't is gonna think it'll kill Viego. It's gonna fuck him really Viego. hard though. It's gonna. Fuck I don't him. think so. You just have to transform your your build into shield bow. You have to play more assassin like with this champion. I I think the fact that the he I just think the base healing getting dropped by five percent is gonna be enough. I think he's still you gonna think be so, good. Even though he's gonna build a lifesteal item. Yeah, I think because it's, because it, the, it's annoying just because he he heals, well, like like live he he heals for eight percent, and he's invulnerable. So now they they took away the healing. He's still invulnerable, which is stupid. I don't think he should have that. Leave he can heal for ten percent. Just get rid of the fucking invulnerable. They when he was released, he he. You know, you know, like reset city. I it's. It's a very it's reset. They just made this champion more reset city too. Did they? Like you, the crit multiplier on the on the Q, like it's just you need to get the kills. But you have like Trasana, you have to get the kills. If you're not getting the kills, you're useless. And I feel like this is with his ultimate and everything the way it is, he plays like a Tristana, realistically. Um, I don't know. I just think with all these other changes to items and stuff and it's they're I th definitely i think knocking him down a peg i think he's gonna drop like he's s tier they're definitely I knocking him down a peg. i think he'll get back into the jungle and he'll be out of a lane well no i, I think, think that's really I think gonna I happen only, i only see him in the jungle now yeah but you still see him in in pros in like whether it's top lane or mid lane well i mean you still see him in lane but yeah, i think he's a this is gonna make him a better jungler especially with his uh with the increase on the uh camouflage I think that's going to um, really, it, it's going to deactivate his lane totally. An extra 50 units, you can't just hit a wall, especially if you're playing top lane. You can't just hit the top side wall and hide and get more uh, attack speed. You can get the attack speed, but you're not hiding, if that makes sense. Yeah, because people are going to be able to see you from further away. So. And the slow, the slow um, From the on Heartbreaker being halved, although a half a second to a quarter of a second, that I don't think makes a huge difference. That's just a very minor nerf. But that, um, that, I think it's they need to do. The, it why, should be interesting. Why are these champions like this just so stacked? Like his alt, he has a it's a invulnerable alt like teleport. It does percent missing HP damage. Has a slow. Like why? Why the fuck? And a reset. Why the fuck does it ha everything have to be so stacked? Like, I know Timo's getting buffs, but like, Timo's R just throws a fucking mushroom, dude. But can we just get some? Can we just get some simple ass like? I don't know. So I th I think he's he's still gonna be good, but I I think he's not gonna be S tier. He he's definitely gonna be more of a glass cannon, I think, than than he was, and I. Th feel like that's kind of the theme of this patch. <laughs> Taking some of the tanky stats away from the champions that aren't supposed to be tanky. But jungler's getting buffed with fleet. He might, I don't know, I guess conquer. We'll see. I'll have to test. Okay. So we are done with that. And we are moving to Zed. 
I haven't Zed's seen too. Sneaky. I haven't seen too many Zeds, but I know I haven't seen too many Zeds, Zeds. But he's strong. Fed, he can. He is. It's pretty gross, especially laning phase. I know his laning phase is barely devastating, but I mean they're raising they're, the AD ratio. They're raising it for the for the poke, but they're dropping the the melee, the, the E ratio, and the um and the the ulti cooldown. cooldown, which is important because. I don't know if you ever lane against a Zed, but like when he really gets going and he hits that level eleven before you do, and it's on a hundred second cooldown or a ninety second cooldown, you're like, dude, didn't you just use that fucking skill? Two seconds, I just died. Did you not just use that fucking skill to kill me? How do you have it already? Kind of like Fizz, and you're just like, stop. This is so stupid. You can't do anything. So right. to to at least give some sort of counterplay, I think I think it's necessary. Okay. Is it a whole lot? No, nah. it's not enough. I mean, I guess. Uh, see, but Ghostblade is getting a buff. That's gonna be good. Yeah. That's gonna be good for him. Yeah, you get that movement speed to run around the map. Yeah, Zoom. maybe that's why they're nerfing him. Well, yeah. So it's like okay, they're dropping, they're changing, they're adding twenty seconds onto his alt cooldown uh, later. But then, uh, Yomu's is giving you fifty percent uh, ability haste because before you'd build that, you wouldn't get that extra fifteen. So it. I don't think it's gonna fully make up for it, but it's not as bad. It makes it not as bad. Yeah. Alrighty, so we are moving to champ buffs. Woo! Starting with Echo, everyone's favorite jungler that fucks your face. They really. I feel like Echo I getting. A while, I feel like Echo getting buffed is he's always getting buffed before Worlds. I feel like people want to see. I just, I don't know. I just, just see, like... feel like I see that champion at Worlds a lot. They just so, love it when he says, do over. Fucking uh, <laughs> 50% extra damage to jungle monsters. Jungle echo. Nothing crazy, but faster clear. And that's what they need, honestly, because right now it's uh, king of the jungle is whoever has the fastest clear. So right. uh, important for him if they want him to be a jungler. Sounds like they don't care if he's a mid laner anymore. He's a jungle champion. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I actually saw an echo. Like in a Summoner's Rift game, not ARAM, but it's weird. I don't even see him in ARAM. <laughs> uh, moving no, on. That's here nor there. Moving on to Evelyn with an ulti cooldown, which I kind of like. It looks like they're trying to bring back some some AP junglers in the mix because right now everybody's AD, unless or even Lilia is not good right now. So Diana is the only other AP jungler. So it looks like they're trying to bring people back to contend with that. I like it. Like a cooldown just dropping by twenty seconds. I don't. All ranked. I don't like seeing okay. Evelyn because she fucking just one shots me. So I don't like. She'll you fuck your face, but she's easy to counter if you play like a Lee Sin. So maybe it even pushes Lee Sin in the jungle. <laughs> like uh, maybe there's there might be ulterior motives. I don't know. Moving on They're though, pretty, we have... pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean it's not that big of a deal. It's gonna be good, but anyways. Lissandra is a champion that needs a lot of help. And yeah, I, I feel like she's a right now. she's a good champion, but I mean, lowering mana cost on her Q base AD is up to don't give a shit. Lowering mana, mana cost, cost I think is is the big one, but only five, only five. is like huge. What is her? I'm curious what her uh... mana pool is. Yeah, mana pool. I th yeah, I just. I think Lissandra just struggles from like one dimensional gameplay. She just she's gonna E in W Q Alt. That's it. Then yeah, four hundred and seventy five has... mana, that's not bad. But yeah, I just she needs other help. She does. Mana absolutely, Q, absolutely. Maybe I mean they they when they changed her passive to do like the frozen ice zombies. That was awesome because her old Those passive. Are OP as fuck. Old passive was just oh every sixteen seconds she gets a free ability. Yeah, which that is was uh, super fucking it's got like zero ass passive. It's it was very outdated. uninteractive. Yeah, very outdated. Uh, moving on to Nami. And... Nami, I like this. I like this change. Uh, base HP moving up an extra fifteen. The W mana cost getting nerfed later or. Er, but I guess buff later because it's dropping, mm. which I like because that is your max ability anyways. There you go. The other thing I did see, and it's not on this list, was some damage uh, changes in her W. Now, those are tentative. They're not on this list. 
Okay. Um, I think if you go to Surrender at 20 and you look for Nami, you should see ebb and flow damage increased by 5 at all levels, and the heal increase by 5 at all levels. Okay. Um, nothing to the scaling, just to the base. Very minor move, but I think that's to combat uh, your Sonas. I think that's what it's here for, is to to help uh, pick another champion into Sona that does similar Sona-style abilities. All right. Another crazy, I like it. She needs a little tune-up. So we're moving on to Senna, which is... I, I don't understand the attack speed. Like, it's just weird. Very weird to me. I don't understand what this champion needs above. I feel like this champion's still strong as fuck. And I feel like it's a support champion, but this champion's really a marksman and really an AD carry. And this is this I... is telling me they're trying to compensate from the Tom Kench Senna, the fasting Senna, since Tom Kent's not a support anymore. They're like, okay, we gotta give Senna a little bit more power. It is this is telling me she doesn't they don't want her to be a support anymore. No. It's, I'm 129% agree with you. In fact, this is telling you with the soul rate drop on it's a minion doubled. kill doubling is telling you, yeah, go ahead, play her as a marksman. Fuck it. Don't don't fast set up. Play her as a marksman. We fucked up. So weird. It's kind of like Thresh, though. Remember Thresh was... Thresh is really... was His design is a marksman. But they had to kind of retcon that to support. So I feel like Senna's kind of the same way. Like, oh... To support, we're gonna retcon that, make her a marksman. Fuck it. I bet you twenty bucks in six months, she's gonna get changed back to support. Yeah, I think, this is. I think this is simply for worlds at the beginning of the season. I just feel like they don't know so what to pretty. do. This is another champion. I feel like they don't know what to do with. Well, I think they touch her. She's like rise. You touch her just a little bit in the wrong direction, and she becomes super fucking op. You touch her too much in the other direction, she's useless. Oh, I mean that that's good for Hope Yeah. You, you want to play her in the AD role, the bot lane yeah. role. So. I mean she's a fun champion, don't get me wrong. She's a very fun, very popular champion, and I think that's why they, they want to ride it out. <laughs> right. Get their get their money's worth, right? All right. Uh moving on to fuck Timo. Uh um, Mo. On hit damage on his E is going up by three at every rank. It sounds to me like they want him to build more on hit builds and less just straight magic damage builds. I don't know why I feel I like this champion still kind of sucks, but he I still fucks you in low elo. <laughs> what the um cuz that's just the initial auto attack damage and then he has his the the dot poison from his E. I don't know what the scaling on that is. That could be very high. Could be. But no, again, we we talked about this last time. Whenever I see Teemo, it's either it's usually on hit with press the attack or grasping the dying grass is just fucking annoying, but um, fuck this champion. I don't know. It's just still the this champion. champion. When my team, when when I have a teammate that drafts Teemo, I instantly want to dodge. And then when the other team picks Teemo, I instantly want to dodge. And you want to get like, that twelve oh, hour van? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Get rid of the fucking champion. I don't know. He's useless. Outdated. They're trying to figure out something to do with him. Um. He's, he definitely has a niche, but I just feel like in the current game and for like six years in the current game, his niche has been gone. There's nothing there. It was to counter fucking Garen and counter fucking Nasus, so and now he doesn't have that. What do you do with this fucking rat? I just feel like in their like meeting room, wherever they discuss these changes, they just <laughs> they have like a bulletin board with all the champions on it. And someone farted on someone else's face and said, whatever, fuck us, move on with our lives. I don't and know. Just like Timo <laughs> is just in the corner and everyone just like, you know, when they're glancing over the fucking bulletin board, they see Timo. Timo's clearly the bullseye and no one can hit him with a dart. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I don't, whatever. This champion sucks. Anyways. Zaya. More buffing. importantly, Zaya. I like this champion. She's I, fun. Right. I like. She she needed some stuff. Let's see. So Q cast time. Just a little bit. Oh, okay. So the Q is going down, scaling with, with the attack, attack speed. speed now, which is sick. That's awesome. Which I like. I mean, it doesn't have a super long cast time, but like definitely having it, I think is like it, put it, cutting it in half. I think is very um, helpful. Mm -hmm. It just allows her to get more feathers out and get that uh, 
blade caller to call him back. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the ulti damage was pretty massive early. One twenty five to two hundred a level one. Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty massive. That's that's almost two BF swords worth of damage early. And then late, it's only twenty five. No big deal. It's not a skill you use to do damage. It's a skill you use to get out, and a skill you use to lock somebody down when they're chasing you to try to turn a fight. It's not a skill you engage with. So I'm okay with it having more damage and even not having a ton of damage at the end. It just it, it helps her out early. And Zaya, and or yeah, it. I like Zaya because she's just one of those champions. She's an AD or she's a marksman that has hard CC, and that's yeah. that's sick. I like that. I like that a lot. Jin. Uh, I guess Senna, but this, I think this is big. I think this is going to be good. So I just don't know what you play her into right now. Cause like, I really, it's just vain. I feel like anybody who's going to chase you down. Cause she kites really well, but she does not chase worth a God damn. I was off with chasing. I just also feel like if Zaya's not paired with Rakan, she's not also not nearly as good. The, the W with Rakan, I think is so ridiculously strong. Especially like level yeah. one, like you just especially level one. Get the bonus and the, I don't speed. know what her what her uh, skill tree looks like right now, but I, think I remember when she was at her best. Not no, not the rune tree, but the skill tree. Like, what? How are you maxing? Are you maxing Q. I think w? you're maxing. I, th- I think you're maxing Q right now, but th- when you play with Rakan, you have to go that W max. You have to the attack speed and the extra blades you get off of Rakan are so important to her damage output that if you're not playing with Rakan, you could probably go. Q max without a problem, but with Rakan you have to go W. I feel like it's so strong. So maybe, but maybe all right, we'll see more Zayas now. Um, might see more Rakan. Actually, Rakan's still pretty popular. Rakan's still pretty good on his own. He is. So uh, no, I think we, I don't know. We talked about that. He should like, be bringing yeah, he's Rakan, the better champion on his own. Yeah, exactly. It didn't. I don't think it started that way. I think it started the opposite way when they first got released that Zaya was better on her own. Or not better on her own, but like as a single champion, Zaya was a better solo. But I think now Rakan is by far the better champion on his own. Obviously, the two together are way a super good combo. And you're still seeing that in, in pro plays. Like someone wants to play Zaya, fuck it, I'm picking Rakan. <laughs> like, right. All right. Fuck it, I like it. I like it. So moving on now, is there a few... Um... Champions here in this list, Rengar is not listed, but we have that. Um, yeah, so these are more extensive changes that are coming, and yeah, we'll start with uh, Uction. So let me bring this up. Uki with his passive, dirty fighting. Uh, there must have been a bug. Um, first note is a bug fix. The second attack will more consistently complete on targets when the first attack was executed at max range. It sounds to me kind of like a Senna where you hit the the one two and you're not getting that second hit at range. Yeah. Sounds like it's just a quality of life, make his life a little bit easier. Um, he needs it. He's definitely weak. He's got he's strong in ARAM, but this champion's weak. This champion is definitely weak. Um, the other bug fix is the improvements in predicting if the first attack will kill the target, including shields on the target and on hit effects on auction. Like Wits End and Kraken Slayer. Uh, this is still part to his passive. So, again, I don't really know what his full passive is. I don't play, I haven't played Uction. He's a hard champion to get your hands on right now, too. Even though he sucks, people still want to play him. He's hard. So, I feel, I feel like um, once I get more playing time on it, I'll understand more of what this uh, change does. Um, his W, going rogue, they've. <laughs> Thank God, added a counterplay. Basically, you kill him, he's not resurrecting anybody. It doesn't matter if he gets the kill. Doesn't yeah, matter if they like, die to minions of the tower. Like, this is important. I feel that, like he that's needed this. fucking annoying. Yeah. That's a weird... That'd be, yeah, that's just... Yeah. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> um, and then they're changing... It. There's a lot of bug fixes I did not know about. Um, but they are buffing, or they're they're adjusting the damage from his E they're just, uh, they're dropping the base numbers later. And then they are buffing the bonus AD scaling. It's which basically is... more feast or famine in the, mm-hmm. in the build, just make him uh, build the damage and, and do it. Otherwise you're not going to get bailed out by your, by your base damages like tanks are. Then they're fixing a bug fix. So, so no longer end early on towers. I don't know if this is a bug or if it's intended. Cause I've seen clips of auctions, 
eing into tower range, enemy tower range, and they don't take any aggro. I don't know if that's intended. I've seen that a few times. I've seen Reddit clips like that. I don't that's know. That's stupid. <laughs> there have been so many champions that have on release that just ignore tower damage, like like when Akali got reworked. Um, Akali, when Diego. Diego first came out, he was invulnerable to turrets. Like, uh, so I don't know Earth about that one. I'll be all. <laughs> um, and then uh, the ulti on comeuppance. Uh, the bug fix minions will be consistently executed regardless of armor bonuses like Holebreaker or Baron Nasher. I think this is important um, because it does give him another play. And I don't know if this is the original intention. They're calling it a bug fix. I don't know if it's the original intention, but I feel like it gives him another play for using the ulti. Like Lucian will will use the culling on a wave to slow the wave down. I feel like this is kind of doing the same thing because it's a similar skill, except it will actually give you an execute as opposed to just damage. Right. I think it's important he does need this for, for the lane. I don't know. Like I said, it's called a bug fix. I don't know enough about his current kit for that to be um, an issue one way or the other. I think people were just like able to hide behind minions if they got locked on and they were like confident that it wouldn't kill the minion wave. So Okay, that, that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then, then uh, yeah, the cooldown cool cancelled cancel by crowd control slash on target ability is from 15 seconds to 5 seconds. I think that's pretty. That's fair. Pretty solid. I think it's fair. Uh, n- not not a whole lot of big changes. I think just minor changes, but it should make him more uh, playable in his current state. All right. Next, we have the mummy, Mumu. The sad mummy. And uh, these are cool changes because I feel like Mumu is just non-existent right now. He was super busted in preseason this year. Yeah, with the uh, with the uh, Sunfire. Sunfire and um, Demonic Embrace and his W yep. just doing so much true damage with his passive. Yep. But they are lowering some base stats, armor and health. This is the cool one. The Bandage Toss is getting a charge with two charges. I like this. This is toss Dude, in, super toss out. Sp- Talk about scuff Spider-Man. <laughs> Sup- he is he's dropping the scuff. He's just Spider-Man now. <laughs> yeah, he's just... They're also and then uh, obviously they're also early it's gonna suck, but... but they're also buffing the AP ratio. Or yeah, so he needs they're it, though. they're nerfing the um Ooh, they are hard nerfing it. They're nerfing the base damage. Ooh wow. Yeah, well yeah, they have yeah. to hard nerf it because he gets two charges. They have to hard nerf it. That's fair. Uh but so then buffing the AP ratio. But early it makes him more of an early game champion, actually. That's right. where he really lacked was early game. He was good mid game, sometimes late game, but really just good to play in a team fight where he sucked early now they're like okay you can have early game but you're not going to do damage late game which fair this champion really should doesn't be need damage. to do damage yeah exactly yeah i like that though yeah yeah uh so in between each charge there's three second uh cooldown three second cooldown which, which i like fine. and you can't reduce it by haste i like that so you can't just fucking spider-man through the whole team fight like you have to actually use it and then use it again um because this whole deal <laughs> i like that his whole deal is he'd have one bandage toss. He, if he, you missed it, you're fucked. Yeah, exactly. Or if you went in, you get one, you ulti, but enemies can predict that, that you're one. gonna you're gonna QR and then you're, yeah. you're done. Whatever that I don't one. know what the bandage toss cooldown is. It's probably like five seconds, and you're like, oh boo, and just jerking off for no reason. Um it's cool. It's gonna it, it I also feel like it's gonna help you like move around the jungle a little bit quicker and go over walls, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so it definitely like gives super you a Spider-Man. more creative path. That's for sure. I I, I like this change. He anything is kind of useless. I like this change. And... Uh, the next change, yeah. W the despair, your damage per second or per two ticks. Um, they're uh, buffing like the it buffing it early. Plus the percentage. Oh no! Okay, yeah, base um, stats are going up. Sorry. Yeah, base stats are going up. The percentage is staying the same. I'm cool with that. Again, he needs because this he's not going to build damage. Uh, or obviously, he really hasn't. I think demonic embrace is still a good item for him because it's a it's a like a the tanky tank AP item. item. Yeah, yeah. I, you just you're helping out his his early damage that he doesn't have. But like I said, this is making him more of an early game champion. I like it. And then um, they are just changing the stun duration the nerfing, at all ranks. Yeah, the ulti. Well, yeah, one and a half, which I get. It's, 
But they're they cause the they got to because they're gonna give they're basically giving you another stun with the Q charge. So not bad. Uh, I think that might uh, help him out. I don't. I'm trying to think of tank junglers that are really good right now. I don't think there is any. Would you count Trundle? That goose egg. Trundle's a fighter because uh, he builds Sunder. He's a bruiser. Huh, maybe. So. I don't know what. I mean, Zach's not good right now. Yeah. Nunu, no, no, they just told you to build AP with him. <laughs> um. So. Yeah, I'm going up empty. <laughs> so next, we are moving on to Gangplank. G Pizzle. Which I used to play the shit out as champion. Your boy. Your main right here. This is your boy. This dude. is this champion. You guys are like this. This champion. <laughs> it was, I, when did uh, Klepto come out? Was that season eight? That was two years ago. Was What are we on 11? Nine? So season nine. When that season, I went from like silver four to gold. I think I peaked gold one that season. Literally playing. I think I had like 500 games of gangplank that season. I was fucking playing so much. But now they're, uh, this is more of a nerf than an adjustment, because they're, Yeah, uh, I don't know, they keep calling it adjustment, but I'm like, it, it, it's definitely a nerf. Definitely an early nerf, that's the, okay. for sure. To take away some of the safety in his they're lane phase. They're giving him, they're mid turning him, like, he's already a late game carry. They're solidifying that with these changes. Well, I feel like they're turning him into a glass cannon. Whereas yeah, I, before, with well, grass, he's just, he Because he's so safe. He's so this safe. Exactly it. So safe that you can sit back and just queue and say, ha ha, fuck it. I don't even care if I lose land. I have silver serpents, bro. So yeah, they're they're changing his passive movement speed. Instead of starting at 30, it's gonna scale from 15% to 30%. Which is gonna be so if you now and then uh, the Q is gonna be counted as a ranged attack, which is stupid because that was his whole thing, is his Q was ranged, but it was counted as a melee. Yeah, quit fucking laughing at me. But so now that's <laughs> gonna like this. I like this change because it directly affects Grasp of the Undying. It actually says maybe you want to take Fleet Footwork. But so Fleet gives you movement speed and it gives you the full heal on Champion's hit. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's it's telling you maybe you want to use Fleet Footwork and not Grasp. I, Don't build tank with this champion. Go Glass Cannon, chase somebody down, bust their face. Well, the, I like this change. It's... He, they just want to cut down on how safe he is. Yep. Um, the the thing with Gangplank, at least now, I mean, we'll get to the the barrel change in a second. Is you want him to do damage, but what's more important is his damage output. So you want him instead of like doing well. I mean, it's all good, but you want him to be doing more DPS more often. I don't think that makes sense, but like. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. Like, you just want to understand where you go. His with damage this. output, the the way he does damage output is more important than the actual damage he does because you want him just constantly flinging out shit. And if he's with, so they're nerfing Sunderer, which was his item. They're nerfing that. They're nerfing Grasp, and they are. We, well, so we'll move to the the Powder Kegs, which they're increasing the crit strike on it. To 125 percent, rather than you think you said 75 percent is like the standard. 75 is the standard crit. So they're putting that 50 percent extra. So they yeah, part of part of me wonders if this has to do with the fact that he doesn't build IE anymore. Well, IE just sucks in general. Well, that's exactly it. Is part of me wonders if this has to do with that though, because IE was like a core item for him, and so part of me wonders like, okay, well you're not getting the damage, like you said, the damage output. That you were getting from IE before, so we're just going to increase his base damage output because he's not building this item. Right. Um, so, I'm curious. But I mean, they're in, I don't know. I wonder if this is going to... um, Because I, I think when the item reworks came out, or the, the Mythics, people were building, at least in pro play, people were building Shield Bow on him. Which was a little weird. Because they had to build Shield Bow and then Essence Reaver, because you need that Sheen item. I still don't think... With Sunder getting nerfed, I don't think Trinity Force is still... Trinity Force used to be fucking god tier on this champion. <laughs> Last year, it was so fucking yeah. good. And then Free Sunder Sheen. is good. Yeah, yeah. Was good. Now it's it's getting gutted. I think you're going back to Shield Bow. It's, it will, or Gale getting, Force. He's getting nerfed double with Sunder because they're dropping the, base, the AD on it. And since his Q is now a range, he doesn't get the melee heal because I think it's like a 4% difference. So there's that, 
And but to compensate, they're giving him two more barrels, which is pretty nuts. Um, even though the recharge like five time five barrels out. The the recharge time is going up. But like you so, can stack, well, you can stack barrels though. That's what I'm saying. Like you yeah. so normally you'd have three, and if the you know it's increased by is it four seconds at max rank now? Yeah, at max rank it's yeah, four yeah. seconds longer. But you'd but have the same early, so it's, not have, that, it's really not that bad. Yeah, because you're you're matching it second. But yeah. you're gonna have two extra barrels normally when you'd have if you use like three in a chain. You're you're yeah, have two more. You could annihilate. You're you gonna have annihilate. Some, you do a, you could annihilate an entire team with the with five. A good barrel cube I can't five wait. Barrels. I cannot wait to watch Tobias Fate play this shit. Five part Tobias combos. Today. Yeah. Shouts out, pretty excited. shouts out to him, dude. That guy's attitude fucking changed so much. All that it guy did. used to do is just grief and int people, and I stopped watching yeah. him. But he's better, anyways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I like I said, I was watching him today. He was very interesting and very uh, to the point. I gangplank. I like this because it makes him. He becomes like another Yasuo Yoni Viego style champion. You're gonna build marksman eighty items. Because that's what's going to get you. You have to do the damage now. You can't sit back and rely on the tankiness like Viego was able to and, and GP was able to with Grasp. You have to do the damage. And you're if you want a safe item, you're going to have to build Shield Bow. If you want an aggressive item, you're going to have to go Gale Force for the Execute. You can go that route. But I think, and this is just my postulation or this is my theory, if you go Fleet Footwork with GP... You can build um, Presence of Mind. Now, the Sheen is still nice, but you're not locked into having to go Essence Reaver if you don't want to, although I think it's still a I strong think you, item. I you think need, you need Still a Sheen. strong item, but now you're not mana dependent on GP because you have Essence Reaver and you have Presence of Mind. Just hit the enemy champion. You get free mana. And then second tree, you could probably go blue tree if you wanted to. If you still think you need mana that bad, you go mana flow. Otherwise, you can go green tree and still get some of those yeah, off tanky, the bone platings and, and the demolish overgrowth or the demolish good. or whatever depends who you're playing against. But I think yellow tree now becomes the best. What do they call it? Precision now becomes the tree of choice. I think and puts sticks him in that glass can. Like, bro, you're gonna blow people up, but you're also gonna get fucking blown up. I'm trying to think. So it'd be fleet presence of mind. I'm trying to think of what. The third row cut down. would be. Oh no, not cut down. What's the? Is it? No, it's cut down. The one that gives you more damage for max health. You're not building health anymore, so sure. Yeah, you take the one. You're playing top lane, but you're I'm probably I'm... going against Renekton, Nasus, maybe Fiora, which that's not going to help you. But I don't think you're going to go with the execute. You're not going Coup de Gras. I'm trying to think. No, in the the middle row where it's either attack speed, tenacity, or life steal. But that's all dependent on who you're playing against but i probably wouldn't go I attack hate, speed you're I probably don't, better off i don't know i life steal or i would tenacity. say attack speed just so you can hit barrels quicker like especially before you get to the level 13 yeah, do bop. um because i don't i don't like building tenacity on gangplank just because it's, it's a stupid reason but you like obviously yeah. yeah i mean even though it's a long cooldown i don't i would rather just rush ionian boots and just get the extra cdr and then I would probably just take the attack speed just to help out with hitting last hitting barrels. I feel like quicker. Life steal isn't bad either, though. It's you're you're, you're, you're sacking no, the opportunity to have grasp to recover health, where you can just get life steal and you have fleet footwork. And but it, it actually keeps you in a safe lane state, to be honest. I don't think the value, the life steal value, is high enough. Well, obviously, what is it? It maxed at eight percent. I think so. Line. Um, eight or nine. But I just if if barrels. If bear do oh, I don't even know. Do, I don't think barrels apply life steal. I don't think so. So I don't. That's the only reason I wouldn't do it. Is it's kind of, eh. Get that's one, fair. One Q so shot. I guess off. you lock in. Yeah, I mean, obviously every champion is gonna have a weakness, right? Sure. In the in the if it's in the uh, rune tree, then so be it. But the rest of that rune tree offers really good stuff. The only like, other really the only other keystone I could think that would be decent would be unsealed just because i mean i guess yeah. he doesn't really need a like uh offensive or defensive like because inspiration tree is really good as well because you can get free boots you can get uh biscuits, biscuits and then time warp 
Yeah. So you, you, you and if you start with uh, refillables, you just, you have sustain up the ass. I think that's still a good one. I do believe in preseason coming up, they are going to completely rework Inspiration Tree. Because that... It needs some help, man. Like Omni Stone. <laughs> oh god, I don't. Even know. We could talk an hour. I, don't know. On how... I, th- I think I think GP just has a very interesting uh, build right now, or will have an interesting build once these changes go through. I feel like Yellow Tree is your best option. Yeah, for sure. I I think this really wipes out Green Tree as your primary, but it's probably your secondary. But even then, you could still go Red Tree secondary if you wanted to. Hell, GP could go Hail of Blades if he wanted to. You pop somebody and you run up and hit a couple auto attacks and then run away. I mean, he's he's not the champion that's going to sit there and fight you the whole time, but he's going to look for his ins and his outs, right? Especially with... He's, he has some versatility. With with four... four With two extra barrels at max rank now, that's... That's sick, dude. That's... I think when he was released, when he first got reworked, I think he could have, like... I think he had, like, six or seven barrels... And I went really, he, yeah, it was a lot. Oh, it was a lot. I don't remember that. I just remember watching uh, that world's was a fucking nightmare because ch- they were him and, and Mordekaiser and Darius were just so fucking broken. But no, yeah, on oh, yeah. on uh, on re- rework release, this champion was disgusting. He still had the mana refund on his Q if he last hit. Yep. Oh, I missed that. Anyways, <laughs> I think, yeah, this is going to change like his whole um play style which is cool though it's cool i think that's i'm, I'm always down more of him. i'm always down for those fucking like barrel one shots fucking just <laughs> yeah, 100 to zero barrel yeah just oh god i just love that okay yeah we get it's gonna be fun it'll be fun to try some new builds on him for sure and speaking of new builds you're looking at lucian Ooh, lucian this is looking a... at a pretty massive change i like this change um it's a drop on his base AD by two. Nothing crazy there. But the Light Slinger passive is saying, you are not playing this champion top lane. You are not playing this champion mid lane. You are playing this champion in the bot lane with a fucking support. And I don't care. This champion will be useless upon Anywhere, next patch yeah, exactly. without a support. Uh, the Light Slinger passive says, Vigilance, allow ally buffs empower Lucian's next two basic attacks to deal an additional 14 plus 10% total AD magic damage. He is now dealing split damage, people. This champion only did AD, aside from his W that does AP da- does magic damage. This champion is dealing split damage after casting a spell. That's you annoying. You cannot itemize against this champion in lane. It is impossible, which makes this champion a better early game champion. Uh, pair him with a Lulu. He's going to play like Kogma. He's basically designed to be a Kogma vein shutdown. Like, oh, okay, you want to play a Lulu, Sona, Nami, Janna champion? I could do that too, and I deal more damage than you at level 1 through fucking 11. What's even even sick too is you don't even necessarily need to play an enchanter. You could play a tank with Font of Life, and that'll still apply it. So, Font of Life. Your uh, Thresh, your Nautilus. I think. Will it, would Imperial Mandate? I think Imperial yes, Mandate would it, uh, uh, proc that too, because that's a buff on. Is on it the a debuff? That's a debuff. That's true. Maybe. Um, but I mean, it doesn't. Either way, it's you, not you locking you. Champion that uses Shirelli. <laughs> Remember, uh, there was that time where you could play Maokai with Shirelias. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tarek is a tank, but he's an Enchanter tank. You just give Lucian options to not die under tower. Maybe Jazuke needs to play bot lane now. <laughs> oh my god, that tilted me so much. Don't ever fucking play Lucian with Airy. Um, his next change is the w it's it's fucking plays. W. <laughs> the mana cost dropping, which I like, and the allies are able to proc the W mark. I think and that's extremely important. That triggers, I like that. That triggers vigilance. Triggers vis- vigilance. So it he doesn't even become the buff. He doesn't even need that's to be pretty broken. <laughs> So if he W's four champions, I will not be surprised if that if that magic damage ratio drops off by half by maybe, the time the or, patch comes out, or they change the total AD to bonus AD. Maybe, oh. but fourteen is already a lot of magic damage at level one. Um, That's a lot of magic damage. And then also, so moving to his R, aside from other reasons to not play him mid anymore, because people were building him with Eclipse, they were building the um. 
the eclipse oh yeah the lethality, the, yeah, lethality. you don't because that's it was just like infinite sustain and uh cooldown reduction but now they are encouraging you to build crit with increasing the number of shots based on your crit chance yes the cooling 25 percent of your crit chance so they're lowering the damage bows, a little bit forces. but they're giving you so it's like Increase your shots, I'll take a lower damage. Five less damage for an extra two shots for free plus crit. That's worth. That's worth. So I'm trying to figure out the numbers. So like 25% critical chance. So if you have 100% crit chance, does that mean you're getting increased 25 shots? Is that... Am I doing the right math there? Does that sound I right? I think so. I think you have so. 100%. I mean, so, you probably build about fifty percent, so you're gonna get an extra twelve shots. Well, I'm trying to think. Uh, Still a lot. That's because th three. I'm trying to think. Three items. Two items will give you forty. 60. sixty with yeah, IE. 60. You need IE. F yeah, yeah. So twenty five percent of sixty is twenty. No, uh, fifteen. It'd be fifteen. So fifteen thirty seven. So that's still if you have sixty percent crit, you're already getting more value. Yep. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I think this is a good change. I'm scared to fucking Lucian's play support. Lucian's gonna be gross, dude. I know. Lucian Braum I'm actually, is gonna be back. I'm scared to play support. Lucian Braum, so Lucian Thrush. Me anytime there's aggression. I like the Lucian Braum lane with the with the stun pop. Yeah. But it'll be good. It'll be nice to see him out of a solo lane. This champion's not a, supposed to be a solo laner, so I like it. All right, and um, then we have the final change, which is Rengar. Let me open up. Rangity dangity pop. This one really confuses me. Because it... The only time I see Rengar now is a top lane cheese. Top lane Rengar with Grassy Undying and fucking Ignite. And I don't know how to beat it. I always get shit on by it. I don't know either. So... So they're lowering the Frosty stacks to three. So he doesn't need to cast that fourth spell to get the Empowered ability. He, I don't know, no longer. So I guess you're able to create a stack if you just jump. I didn't know that. Um, uh, dude, I have no idea. I don't yeah, even I, play Rengar, so. And then, then the Frosty, the fall off time is going two seconds longer, so you can hold on to your, uh, your your stacks longer. Your stacks a little bit longer. <laughs> and the empowered cast movement speed duration going up, doubling. One and a half to three. Why? Like, that's just like, tell me. So just imagine him jumping out of the bush, empowering, queuing you, getting the extra movement speed, running back in the bush, disappearing, and doing the same shit again. Just but they're over. dropping, they are dropping the movement speed total. It's You get it longer, but you're dropping the total. So you're going to get probably the same distance, um, but you're not going to get away as fast. And okay. then the, I don't even know what Bone Tooth Forgiveness is. So, so um, he doesn't necessarily. So you know he has to kill all five enemies on the team or enemy team to get. Yeah. So. Oh, he doesn't necessarily have to get a kill. It could be an assist. So he needs to get out. it live. He needs to get a kill. Seconds. An assist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now it's going. It's doubling. So, you One know, he to, could it's easier to get his stacks. If he dies, but then gets an assist within two seconds, three seconds, he's gonna get the stack. Um, and then the uh, w what's going on with this W? I don't I have the. I got photo this, in front of me. I got this one right here. So basically, it's very simple. They are the base roar. I don't know. I'm assuming. Uh, I don't see. I don't know if if the base um, ability is gets oh, is. added with the frosty one because they're different. They they do a little different shit. But basically, yeah. the base roar is you're gonna get ten armor and magic resist. Increased so by 50%. 50 plus 80 percent AP. <laughs> the AP part is so fucking they're, stupid. They're going to make him tankier if you jump into... Okay, so, okay. Not necessarily, I guess, going just top lane, because I did not realize that if you hit a large jungle creep, you get the bonuses too. Increase to by okay. 50% for each champ. So every champion you hit after you cast that, or if so, if you hit a champion while casting it, you will get uh, 15 armor magic resist if you hit one if you hit two you'll get another 10 because it's okay. just casting it you get 10 and 10 but then you get 50 percent more of those um that makes sense of that value okay. Okay. okay um and then the max is uh he's gonna get 
a bigger heel. Okay, so I guess I don't ca- uh, see. I don't. I don't know if they carry. Like, do I? Does he still get the magic resist and armor buff? I would think so. With the I think, max, I think you do. I think you get the buff and the heal. Okay, so now he's getting an increased heal per champion. So same thing as the yeah. Same heals thing as Rengar the, for fifty yeah. percent. Now it's going fifty to three hundred and thirty-seven. Health, yeah, yeah, that's per level. So that's levels one through eighteen, right? And then increase. So level eighteen is gonna be fucking disgusting and hard to kill if he just hits you with an empower W. Yeah, but does the game get to level eighteen? Nope. <laughs> um, and then so and also on top of that, you know his W does increase damage. Is gonna do increased damage. But I guess the thing is, is you, uh, you. I wonder if you're gonna max W second now. Normally you batch third. Could you max the Q? And yeah, I feel like the... you don't. I feel like you can ditch the Ebola strike and just go with the heal. Um, depends. It might depend on how the game is and what the team comp is too, though. True. So that's the W change, and then the Bola strike is you can instantly cast it while leaping. So there's no like hesitant weird while you hit E, and then yeah, excuse me, and then uh, it's gonna reveal champions, which is big. Yes. The few times I played Rengar, you like throw your uh, Bola Strike into a bush, and you can see Hopefully it. Hopefully, catch somebody. You yeah. see the animation, but you don't see the champion because you could. There could be like four people in there, or, yeah. or you don't know what you're hitting. So that's that's pretty cool. I still think this is going to be bigger for top Rengar. Um, just giving him like tank stats. I don't know. Yeah, it was not that, his tank stats aren't that good in a 1v1, though. His tank stats are better. It looks like they're increasing his tank stats in, like, a, a team fight situation. Or his, uh, I don't call it forgiveness, but it is more of a forgiveness. Like, oh, you jumped into a team of four people. You're not quite as fucked as you used to be. <laughs> right. No, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, But uh, this champion is pretty useless in his current state anyways, so. I think he needed a little something one way or another. And I think the game right now really revolves around team fighting. So um, I'm not mad at it, even though I hate being killed by Rengar. I hate seeing an enemy Rengar, especially when you're playing supporter ADC. You're like, cool, I'm fucked. It's just a matter of time. It's going to be a matter of time. Like, fucks me. Rengar, just trying to think, Rengar jungle with new fleet footwork. He's just never, he's going to come out of the jungle every time full HP. Like I just... I don't think he's gonna take any damage. Yeah, here's a cha- here's another champion that uses fleet. Didn't even think about that. God damn it. <laughs> um that's that's so it a though. Total of three champions. Yeah. But um that's it. This was a long episode. So a long episode. If a you lot of made changes. It... These are very tentative guys. So remember these numbers can and most likely will change, and we will update you on the patch update next week with what the actual numbers are and you can go back and listen they can also get forth. pushed like to the next patch or the, yeah they, they also may not make it this patch too depending on what they're looking at there's a lot of changes we went over but they're nothing there's only a few that are really big um but it's just a long list i'm excited to see what happens when we get closer to worlds which is like a month like almost a month away. I like I like a lot of these champion changes. I think it's going to have a pretty big impact on worlds, especially being so early now mm-hmm. that it's going to be right after playoffs. These players are going to be able to practice this stuff. Um, so I like it. I mean, I think this is going to be interesting. And uh, yeah, should I think... spice up playoffs. Should spice up play ins. <laughs> you you got some hopium or what? No, I have no hopium, dude. Fuck, I don't think. Just off topic, I don't think 100T is going to beat anybody in, in Worlds. I don't know if Liquid's going to keep their current state of play into Worlds. Uh, I don't see TSM doing anything in Worlds. I think TSM's got a, a big, fat, glaring weakness so, do in you the think, mid lane. Do you think uh, TSM's going to be the third seed, or the final seed? It could be EG. <laughs> It's it's I gonna don't, be. I don't think Cloud Nine's going. I don't. I think Cloud Nine. Uh... So, okay, so I know this. I know we don't really talk about pro, but this is interesting. But because this weekend or on Thursday it's EG versus Cloud Nine, and then Friday is TSM versus Immortals, which is TSM should. should... If TSM loses that. 
then we've got a Yikes. whole another fucking thing on our hands, and that's a different conversation. But TSM, and I think, is why they agreed to mop the floor, even though they got whooped in scrims last week against them. Uh, I don't think they were showing their full hand because I think they thought there's a possibility they might play them. I don't know. I'm not Bjergsen. I can't tell you. I'm not the coach, but I can only speculate. So that's um, that game was that match is Friday, and then Saturday is to determine the first team to go to the finals, which is either Liquid or Hundred Thieves. I think Liquid's gonna win. I think Liquid is just the stronger team right now. Um, I would be. I I think the more interesting game to watch is gonna be EG and C9. I think that's gonna be a fun and then series. On Sunday, it's the winner of the C9 EG versus the winner of TSM Immortals. Immortals. Yeah. And then the winner. The winner of that match will play the loser of uh, Liquid uh, 100 Thieves. It's yeah. very confusing to think about, but they got it. There's, is, there's but so if, many if you're looking at the bracket, it actually makes sense. But uh, I like this style of bracket. It's definitely more interesting. It sucks that like teams like Golden Guardians are like there, then they just get blasted out. But to see IMT. Uh, upset Dignitas from the upper bracket. Dignitas got blown away and then upset in the lower bracket. I think that's where the excitement comes in, and that's what makes this kind of bracket system more fun. Um, it is going to be extremely weird to not see... It's going to be really weird if we don't see uh, TSM or C9. So, okay, yeah, did... I Do you think... Do you think TSM I think is TSM, the third... Okay, so I think TSM can beat C9. I don't think that's a problem. I think TSM should beat they oh, okay. should beat IMT. So TSM uh, It's the EG series that is weird because you never know what impact is going to show up and what Jazuke <laughs> is going to show up. And really what Jazuke is going to show up is a bigger deal, but TSM's big weakness is in the bot lane with Lost. I think he kind of looks lost at sometimes. Um, so do you Danny think Danny does not, even though Danny sucks in the lane phase, which kind of evens him out. He's a much better team fight oh, yeah, no, player. He's terrible. So, but okay. Spika is a better jungler, I think all around. And I think Huni and impact are pretty even in terms of top lane. When Jizuke is kind of a coin flip and POE is kind of a standard solid, but POE can't play anything. It's not a control mage, which is a glaring weakness, which means if they go to worlds, they're going to do nothing. It's like, oh, you're playing Control Mage. I'm going to shit on you with Lucian now. Bye. So do you Actually, think... Lucian's going to get changed. JK, so... I take that back. <laughs> you're going to shit on with an assassin. Bye. So do you think <laughs> C9 and uh, EG, who do you think wins? That's a tough one. It... Oh, God, if I had to if I had to say it, it's going to be a five-game series. And I'm going to give the edge to C9 because I think Perks is more level-headed than Jazuke. My heart wants C9. But I wouldn't be I think, surprised if EG wins. I think Fudge could hold his own against Impact. I think Zven is a better laner than Danny. I think Ignar is a better support than Vulcan. Um, Perks, Jazuke. Honestly, Perks has been kind of a coin flip. So that could be either way. I think Blabber is the better jungler, though. Um, it's just, it's got to be the Blabber Perks show. If it's not the Blabber Perks show, I think they lose. Okay, so C9 w wins. TSM should win, win on Friday should. against some Morbles. <laughs> so should. then if it comes to C9 um TSM C9, TSM I think TSM wins. Okay, I'm going to disagree with you then. So maybe but, we'll have a bet. <laughs> there's a with C9 there's that coin flip is they could I know. It's tough. Be insanely good like EG or they could be insanely bad like EG. You don't know what you're going to get. And if Perks is going to wear his hat, hopefully he's going to win, you would think, but Jokes on us! Oh no! Jokes on us! EG is gonna win, and Immortals is gonna win. <laughs> yeah, right. Jokes are gonna sit here and TSM and C9 and Jack and fucking Andy are gonna call each other and be like, what "The fuck did we just spend our money on?" But I think I think honestly TSM and I like Power of Evil. He's a I think he's a great player. Mm -hmm. If they need a mid laner, like I, honestly, if they had a Blaze Olive, I think they'd be better. Uh, he is definitely more versatile, and they need a they need desperately an ADC and I know they got kind of caught with their pants down when Doublelift decided to retire and I think that kind of fucked what their whole plan was originally um, so I it should be interesting I 
would be curious to see if they ever decide to pull Cody Sun up instead of Lost. <laughs> because I think Cody Sun's a better player. At least he has a better pedigree. Put it that way. Cody Sun has a better pedigree with more accolades than Lost does. Uh, Lost is very clearly a liability for that team. I don't know. Maybe, maybe um, if people are interested in us talking about pros, maybe when Worlds comes up, we can like just look at plays insane plays that happen and just react to them and just talk about them and maybe i don't know it's an idea yeah but um, yeah if, if you guys are interested in it but hey you guys made it this far this is yeah this is a really fucking thank long you. episode um you're amazing thank you if for you getting stayed. this far <laughs> um go ahead and follow us on spotify if you're listening on spotify on anchor on youtube you want to search with quotation marks according to low elo you'll find us we there. have an instagram account up now yeah we got instagram it's also as well. called according to low elo Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. debating changing the name to ATLE Pod, but I, like, I don't know yet. I like that one. Right, right now it's according to Low Elo. You can find us on there. It's a little sad, a uh, icon probably, until we've made a new icon. Probably making a Twitter account too. But um, yeah, check us out, man. We're 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 trying to be there for for all of us plebs. <laughs> we're we're having fun. I'm having a lot of fun talking about having this. A and, lot of fun so. talking about this stuff and thinking about it in ways that I hadn't thought about before. And I'm sure some of you guys that are uh maybe newer to the game or even older people that just play casually like we do. Uh or maybe your high low people that think we're stupid as fuck and just laughing at us. That's fine. That's great. I like that too though. Because oh. you could teach me a thing or two. Please. And I would love to have you on to teach us a thing or two. You know what I mean? I think that uh, what we're doing is is conducive to to constructive criticism and conducive to making people just better at the game, which League wants. League wants you to be better at their game. They do better when people play better. Right. Uh, and it extends the longevity of the game, which I think is a good game overall. <laughs> On certain days. <laughs> As as much as my frustrations may get a hold of me, uh, it, clearly it's doing something right. So, guys, if you have a comment, drop it. Leave it below, we'll, uh, please. I want to hear it. I want to read it out. I want to have that discussion. Um, I want to have you on the show. Yeah, that'd be that's another thing too. We just suggestions, just throw them at us. Um, please. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get out of here. So. Uh, We'll see you next week for the actual patch notes. We'll see you guys next week when we're talking about stuff that matters to low-elo players like you and me. See you later. Late.